All right, greetings, Python coders. I am once again Alan E. Moore, and I remain the author of Mastering GUI Programming with Python, a 524-page love letter to the PyQt framework, available from Amazon or directly from the publisher, Pact Publications. There will be links in the description. In our last video, we created a simple but non-functional login window by hand coding a GUI in PyQt. And just to refresh your memory, it looked a little bit like this. You can type in the username, password is obscured, we have a cancel and a login button. In this video, we're going to talk about the mechanism that PyQt uses to actually connect your GUI back to functionality in your program, and it's called signals and slots. Before we do that, though, let's take a quick overview of what GUI programming is really all about. So I'm just going to open up a new window here, and I'm just going to type some pseudocode. So when you start programming and start doing your first Python scripts, um, you might be creating things like web scrapers or data processing routines or uh, maybe a guessing game or something like that. So your programs usually start at the top and they proceed down through to the bottom and along the way you might have a loop you might get input from the user. And then you might have conditions based on some of that input. But in the end, you're going to output some sort of final output or maybe have some kind of side effect like writing a file or updating a website. Ultimately though, all of the, st the uh, code flows from the top to the bottom and then exits. That's what we call procedural programming. With a GUI, the architecture is a little bit different. So when we create a GUI, what we're doing is creating objects And within those objects, we're going to have widgets, right, like buttons. We may have uh, line edits. And then we're going to have functionality, right? So do processing, say, right? And uh, value equals l dot text when we run our GUI it's going to define these classes and then we're going to have what we call an event loop which is just an infinite loop that gets the next event and processes it according to what our GUI needs, right? So then our GUI will need to connect these events somehow our GUI will need to say, okay, when this button is clicked we're going to do this processing. So a button being clicked is an example of an event. And that event would be registered in some kind of queue. And in the event loop, that queue will be processed. So the flow of a GUI application is do a whole bunch of setup of different objects, and then just enter this endless loop and 
process that loop until the application is closed. So what every GUI framework you will ever work with has, first of all, it will have some way of launching an event loop. And in PyQt, we know that's when you run qapplication.exec. What it will also have is some way to connect events back to functionality. And in Qt, that is known as signals and slots. OK, so now that we know the theory behind event-based programming, let's look at this signals and slots system that Qt uses to implement it. I'm here on the Qt website on, in the documentation. This is the documentation for signals and slots. And looking at this diagram, what you can see is that objects, any Q object, so that would include widgets, uh, data models, lots of other things, almost everything in the Qt libraries are based around Q object. Q objects can have signals. Signals are things that are emitted in response to an event. Okay, so an event happens to an object, that object emits a signal. We can connect the signals to what's called a slot, and a slot is something that triggers some piece of functionality in a widget. To see what that means, I've moved over here to the abstract button documentation. This is the parent class of all buttons, including Q push button, which we like to use a lot. And you can see that uh, I've scrolled down here to where the signals and slots are documented. So the signals here include clicked, pressed, released, and toggled. Those are all signals that buttons will emit in response to events. So clicked is when we, you know, just click on a button. Pressed is the initial click before we release. Release is when we release off of that button, off of that click. And then toggled is for buttons that can be either on or off. And that means that their state has changed. The slots include, uh, you know, we can click, so we can chain one button click to another, uh, setting the checked state of a button, animating the click, um, setting the icon size, so that's interesting. So these are all things that we could connect a signal of one object to on a button. Um, over here in the Q line edit, we see that there are signals for when the cursor changes its position, uh, when the user finishes editing, when input is rejected, return is pressed, selection changed, text changed, text edited. We also see that there are slots here for clearing the text widget, the copying, cutting, paste, redo, select all, setting the text, and undo. Uh, over here in Q widget, which is the base class of all widgets. You can scroll down and see. It has many, many slots here. We have close, hide, lower, raise, repaint, all kinds of things that you could do. And keep in mind, these slots are inherited by subclasses. So all our widgets derive from Q widgets. So all widgets have got all these slots and these signals. All right, so I've got our login app here. And we're going to start making some connections between signals and slots. We're going to start with a very simple one. So we saw when we looked at the documentation that buttons have got a clicked signal. OK, so we're going to can connect our cancel buttons clicked signal to our widgets close signal so that when the user cancels, the widget will close. The way we do that is we say cancel button dot clicked dot connect self that's our Q widget dot close okay so what this says is we get the signal which is just a property of the widget the cancel button widget and we call its connect method and we pass it the slot that we want to connect it to in this case self.close. Alright, I'm going to save that. 
I'm going to go over here and we're going to run this. And now you'll see, okay, if I press the login button, nothing happens. If I press the cancel button, okay, the widget closes. Let's try that again. So if I hit the cancel button, again, we've hit that close slot and the widget closes. So in, in Qt, um, signals have to be connected to slots and a slot is kind of a special thing. In PyQt, we can connect a signal to any Python callable. It does not have to be a special uh, Qt slot. It can be anything that we can run, a function, a class method, a built-in a custom function that we define ourselves. So, for instance, we might want to define in this class, this login window class, an authenticate function or method. Okay. And we're going to need to get our username. Okay, before I do this, this is just a, a quick aside. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change these widgets from username input to self dot username input. And that may confuse some of you because it may not be super obvious why sometimes we save things as instance properties like self dot whatever and why sometimes we don't. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save buttons too. So why do we do that? There's, there's basically two reasons why we would want to do that. The first, and, and the reason I want to do it in this case, is because we want to be able to refer to those things in other methods outside of init. Because as soon as init exits, okay, anything that is not an instant me instance method Right, any of these variables like button widget here, those variables go out of scope and we will no longer be able to reference them from any other method in the class. Okay, so in this case, that's the reason I'm making these instance properties is because I want to access them outside of the init method. Okay, the other reason we would do it is because for whatever reason, we just don't want those objects going out of scope. And that comes into play sometimes in PyQt because certain objects have to stay in scope in order to work right. And I won't get into that in this video, it's, it's a little more advanced, but that's why you'll see things being saved as instance method. Stuff we don't need after init is done, like these layouts and stuff, we can just leave those regular variables, they can go out of scope, it's fine. As long as they've been parented by a widget or a layout, they're not going to be deleted. They're going to stay around. Okay, so back to our callback here. We're going to say self.username input.text. Password is self.password input.text. And then we'll just make this real silly and pointless. All right, in this case, we're going to launch a queue message box. It's a parent widget and title. And the message, you are logged in. All right, else they don't get the right password and username, we will tell them you have failed. You are not logged in. We won't be so negative. Okay, so we have this method it's just a Python method. It's not anything special as far as Qt's concerned, but we can still connect our submit button to 
oops, self.authenticate. All right, let's give that a try. So if I try to log in, I'm not logged in. If I use user and pass, now I am logged in. All right, good. And cancel, still closes out the window. Okay, so that's the most basic use of signals in slots. But signals and slots can do even more. Um, one cool thing about signals and slots is that signals can carry data with them. So for example, my text widget, we'll say my username input, my, it's a line edit, sorry, not a text widget, a line edit has got a signal called text changed. I think we saw that when we were looking at the documentation. And I don't want to call that. I want to call it connect. I'm going to connect it to, let's see, let's connect it to an instance method here. Self dot uh, set button text. Okay. We'll make that here. Set button text and we'll take self now this will take an argument okay because text change when text change is fired it's fired every time that you make a keystroke inside of this this line edit and it sends the current text that's in the line edit along with the signal okay so what we will do is we will say if text if there's anything in there because remember this signal will be sent even if we backspace all the way to the beginning so text might be empty uh, if text self dot submit button dot set text text log in text. Okay, we'll use an F string there. Oops. Else, we'll just set it to log in. Okay, let's give that a try. All right, so now you notice this says login, and I guess I'm not going to be consistent here, but it's all right. So if I type user, it says login user. Remember, as I type in or backspace over each letter, it, it updates the button with every keystroke. Okay, and it will expand out that button. And of course, if we backspace all the way back, it just says log in. That is pretty neat because a signal cannot just carry text. Uh, it can carry many values, as many as you want. It can carry complex things like objects. It can carry dictionaries, tuples, sets, um, class instances. You name it, a signal can carry whatever you need it to. So this is a very powerful way to communicate between widgets or objects within your program. There are, however, a few limitations. So let's talk about that. When you use a Python callable as a slot like this, you're calling this function. So just like with any function call, if you have um, some parameters that are required and you're not providing values for those parameters, you're going to get an exception. Let me show you. So now if I type user, oop, we get a crash, right? Missing one required. Let me see if that right, 
positional argument. Okay, sorry, that's kind of skinny right there. Let's look at that. Missing one required positional argument, blah. Okay, so text changed obviously only sends one value. If we connect it to a function that it requires two, that's going to be a problem. The inverse, though, is not true. So if we just say text equals Bob, OK, we'll save that. OK, this time, no error. OK, it just says Bob. Point being, if your signal sends more data than the function can take, that's OK. OK, unlike in Python, if you try to call a function with more values than the function can accept, you'll get an error. But in the case of signals, uh, Qt is smart enough to just drop that extra data if it's connected to a function that can't take that. Now, it is possible to declare a Python function or method as an actual Qt slot. Okay. To do this, we use from Qt core the pi Qt slot decorator. So if you're not familiar with decorators, this is just a way to modify a function or a method with some extra functionality. And when we do this, we have to pass it the data types that the slot will expect. This does a couple of things for us. Um, it provides a small speed boost, probably nothing you will ever notice in any program you'll write. Um, it also provides us type safety. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and then there are certain situations, usually involving threading, where you can eliminate some problems by declaring these as slots. So if I go over here and run this, okay, you're going to notice it runs the same. You don't really notice a difference there. However, if I change this and say that it's expecting an int, now the program crashes when I try to run it. Why does it say that? It says here, type error, decorated slot has no signature compatible with text changed, Q string. So what it's saying is that I've declared this slot to only accept integers. Well, text change emits a string. So I can't make this connection. It, uh, it prevents that. We call that type safety. So it is making sure that the right data types are being sent to the function when you're dealing with a library like Qt that's written in C++, it's a good idea to kind of give yourself a little bit of help there. Um, so you can do this. It's really kind of optional, uh, except in certain situations, you make a call. OK, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to create a custom signal. OK. So we're not just limited to the built-in signals that widgets have. We can actually create our own. And this is something I like to do a lot when I'm creating, say, a dialog like this, or a login box, a configuration box, anything like that. So what we do is outside of a knit up here, we're going to define a signal called authenticated. And that signal is going to indicate that our user has successfully authenticated. To do that, we call PyQt signal from Qt Core. And we have to provide for it the data types that will be sent with the signal, if any. So in this case, we will send the username who is authenticated. And we'll send that as a string. Once we've defined that, we can go down here and we can emit that signal. So after our username or after our user successfully logs in, we're going to emit a signal. 
and what, how we do that is we say self and the signal name which is authenticated and then we call its emit method and we pass into that method the data that we want to include okay so notice back up here we defined a signal that sends a string okay that's the string type and down here when we emit that signal we send with it the username now if you want to actually see that signal in action we'll have to create another method so let's let's create another method down here normally you would connect this to a different object but just for simplicity's sake we're going to connect this here and we'll just call this user logged in pass in self and pass in the username and we'll just show another message box Q message boxes are super convenient we'll say self is the parent widget title of logged in and the message will be an F string of username is logged in okay and now back in init we're going to make a connection so we would say self dot authenticated dot connect self dot user logged in a uh, quick note if you're not someone who is ever used to passing around functions or methods as objects notice here we are not calling this method we don't have parentheses after it okay same here same here same here we are just referring to these functions and slots and methods by name okay that's important you don't want to call these methods because doing that would evaluate them to their return value you want to refer to the methods as na by name you're passing that method object to the connect method all right hope that's not too confusing just remember when you're connecting these slots you don't actually put the parentheses after the slots to call them all right so let's try that let me go back to our shell here we will call our okay now we'll type user pass you are logged in user is logged in okay so that's our second um, signal that authenticated signal calling that user logged in slot so that is an introduction to signals and slots hope that has been instructive if you have comments or questions please feel free to leave them um, I will have links to all this code down there in the description uh, and all these things are covered in depth in my book. Please do check it out. Hope you'll get a copy. Um, not just because I want to sell books, but because I see so many people with so many questions about this library. And it's a great library. Would love to answer all those questions for you uh, by having you read my book. So, till the next video, y'all take care. God bless.